Welcome back to Zuko Builds. Today I am recreating this box joint jig from Jonathan Katz Moses. He's a YouTuber, phenomenal woodworker. I get a lot of information from him and I was looking for just a simple box joint jig that's also practical. And a couple of things about this box joint jig caught my attention and one of them is being this stop block here with pieces of paper that are acting as shims. Um, it's kind of, it takes a little finagling to get the perfect fit for your box joints and these paper shims just make it so much easier. So this was a brilliant idea. I'll go through this in the video. Another thing I liked is there's a sacrificial fence screwed onto the permanent fence. And if you wanted to make different size joints, you can easily unscrew this. You can see I've already done a lot of screwing to this. Just take off this sacrificial fence, put on another one, make different sizes, and so easy, so practical. So I'll cover this more in the video. Let's hop right into it. The materials I'll be using for this build are half inch MDF for the base and the runners, and three quarter inch ply for the permanent fence, and half inch ply for the sacrificial fence. Here I'm just taking my MDF and ripping it down to the width that I want. You can make it any width you want and I'll use the cutoff to make the runners. Here I'm just taking that cutoff and ripping it down to 3 quarters of an inch so that it'll fit perfectly in my miter slot. Remember when you're cutting runners you want to make sure that they have no wiggle left or right but that they slide up and down freely. I went ahead and took my runners over to the miter saw to cut two runners of the same length. I'll place them in the miter slots and use my fence as a guide for my base so that I know my base is square to the blade. Then using the fence as a reference, once I have my base where I want it to be on my runners, I'll go ahead and make a mark on where the miter slots are on the back of my base. That way, when I use my CA glue with accelerator, I know where to spray the accelerator. Now that we have our miter slots marked on our base, let's go ahead and apply our CA glue to our runners and using those marks that we made, we'll spray the accelerator on the base. Once you've applied your glue and your accelerator, just press down firmly for about 10 seconds and that should keep it secure enough so that you can flip this over and fasten some screws. Go ahead and flip this thing over and pre-drill some holes and be sure to countersink these. You want your screw heads to be flush with these runners. And since this is MDF and it's pretty soft, I will be fastening the screws with just the hand screwdriver. So my base was a little bit too long, so I'll go ahead and flip it over so the runners are facing up and out of the way and chop this down to a more ideal size. Once again, these dimensions don't really matter, just do what feels more comfortable to you. Now I can start working on my permanent fence with this 3 quarter inch plywood and I'm ripping this down to about four and a half, five inches. I forget the exact measurement, but rip yours down to whatever size you want. I also ripped down the sacrificial fence, which is the half inch ply, and I'll go ahead and take the measurement of my base and cut both of my fences down to size at the miter saw. Now for the permanent fence, I will be using CA glue and accelerator again and actually drilling some screws in from the bottom of the base. So I'll go ahead and use my fence as a reference again. That way I can bump up the permanent fence to my table saw fence and that'll pretty much make sure that it's aligned. But always double check with the speed square or some sort of square to make sure that everything is nice and straight.
the same thing as before just make sure to apply a pressure for about 10 to 12 seconds let the glue and the accelerator do its job then you can flip it over and pre-drill and sink in some screws next i can start working on the keys for this box joint jig and I want my joints to be three quarters of an inch. So I just took a piece of three quarter inch ply and set that width on my table saw. And I'll go ahead and rip these out. So I went ahead and swapped out my blade for my three quarter inch dado stack. And you want to raise the blade so that they come up a little bit over your key. And keep in mind, I have the key resting on my base since that's where we'll be cutting everything. So just make sure your blades come up a little bit above that key. Now that we have the blade set to the proper height, let's go ahead and make our first cut. And please note that my sacrificial fence for the time being is just clamped to the permanent fence. And once you have it set where you want it to be, you'll go ahead and screw that fence down. But it's just clamped on for now. The reason you didn't want to screw that sacrificial fence in just yet is because we need to place that cut directly over our key so that it's nice and snug. And I went ahead and cut out two more pieces out of that same key that was longer to use as spacer blocks. Then you'll take that first spacer block to put on the inside of the key closest to the blade and that second block inside of the slot we cut to use as a stop block. Then go ahead and clamp this fence back into place and we'll turn it over on its side and fasten some screws. I'm totally blocking you guys for this one but all I'm doing is screwing in some screws and once again make sure to countersink so the screw heads aren't sticking up and pushing your workpiece away from the fence. So this is the second feature that I absolutely love about this build and it's using the stop block with these paper shims here. I just cut out a bunch of squares out of a scrap piece of paper and cut this stop block out of a hard piece of maple. I'll use the papers to shim between the sacrificial fence and the stop block I made. And if we need to make any minor adjustments, we can shim accordingly. So if we need the joint to be tighter or looser, we can add pieces of paper or take them out. And one thing to note when you do need to make those micro adjustments is if your joints are too tight, you want to move your key closer to the blade. So you'll shim some more papers in there. And if your joint's too loose, you want to move the key away from the blade, so you'll take out pieces of paper. I absolutely love how simple this is and the ability to micro adjust like that, which is why I wanted to replicate this one. So now let's get into our test cuts, which you should always do when making a new jig. What you want to do for these cuts is press the first piece up against the key make your cut and then put that slot over the key and keep making your way down the board. Now I'm sure you guys noticed that that key was just fitting way too tight in the slots so I'll go ahead and pop it off and sand over the edges just a little bit. You don't want it to be loose or else your joints are going to be super loose. Give it a little round over, pop it back into place and that should do the job. Now to make the cuts on the second board, let's go ahead and flip our first piece over 180 degrees. We'll butt up our second board to the first board and make our first cut like that. Then once you have that first slot cut out, go ahead and rinse and repeat how you were doing it on the first piece. So for the first test, these were so tight I couldn't even get them together. So what we'll do is take out the screws of our sacrificial fence and scoot the key a little over towards the blade. I'll probably add two, maybe three more pieces of paper and that should do the job. 
So that first joint was really, really tight. So I went ahead and spaced it with about four more pieces of paper. And I'll take my new test pieces and start these cuts all over again. So I made all of these cuts and four pieces of paper was too much. These joints were way too loose. So I went ahead and took out two pieces of paper to split the difference. And I finally got a perfect fitting joint. Peekaboo. I'm so awkward. I am so awkward sometimes. All right, guys. It took me a few tries to get it exactly where I wanted it, as you can tell by all the screw holes. But I have a perfectly fit box joint with some glue. This ain't going anywhere. I really have to. I mean, I can honestly make it just a little bit looser, but I want it to not go anywhere. So that's perfect for me. Um, a couple key things for this jig, for any box joint jig, is if your joints are too tight, you'll scoot your key closely to the blade, so you'll add a couple more pieces of paper. And if your joints are too loose, you will take pieces of paper away to scoot your key further away from the blade. So if it's too tight, scoot your key closer to the blade. If it's too loose, scoot it further away from the blade. Um, I loved how simple this was. The hardest thing was literally just getting it like perfect for everything to fit perfectly, but that wasn't even too hard. Just add and subtract some paper. Um, what was I gonna say? Don't know. All right, I thought I had another thought I was gonna share with you guys, but I can't remember. So I'll just close out the video. Um, it's bugging me though. Maybe I'll, I'll leave it down in the description if I think of it. So hit that thumbs up if you liked the video. Subscribe if you're not already. Let me know what you guys wanna see in future builds down in the comments below. It really does help me give you guys content that you actually wanna see. So please let me know in the comments below. Shoot me a follow on Instagram, say what's up, and I'll see you guys next week. No.